Hi. I've been doing film photography for a very long time, over 45 years, I think, really. And it has always been quite expensive. I remember saving my pocket money, trying to afford film, and always looking around for ways of saving money when it came to buying film. In the 70s and 80s, quite often I used to, I, you would find cheaper suppliers at one point. Boots used to do, the, the Boots is a chemist in the UK and they used to do a black and white film which was, I found to be very good. One way in which you could always save money on buying film was to buy in bulk and you can buy it in a canister and then load up your own 35mm cassettes. This used to be, of, I think I used to pay, believe it or not, £17 for 30 metres back in the 80s. Now I've just done a quote this morning and Kent Mill film came out at, um, I think it was 50, yes, £52 and that produces 18, 30, 18 36 exposure films. Now, what I thought I would do would, is show you how to use a bulk loader, how to load films. There are some advantages because you can make a film 36, you can do a short film. If you are trying out a camera, you might only want to do 10. It's very flexible. And that flexibility can be fantastic. However, it can be a little bit of a fiddle to do. And when I was pricing out cheap film today, it was fascinating that you can actually, a certain UK company are doing Kentmere 400 ASA film for £4.12 for 36 exposure, where when I worked it out on the um, bulk film, that works out at £3 something um three pounds eleven so you basically save a pound of film you basically save 25 percent of the film and you could say that's fantastic however when you then think of the time you spend loading the film and you do race a little bit in the film as well you might decide that actually you're very happy to pay a pound extra now plus you need cassettes and Cassettes can be reloadable ones. This is a reloadable cassette. I think it's a company called Kaiser. I find they are absolutely fine. One issue is we, you will notice there's no DX coding here. Now the DX coding tells the camera what the ASA or ISO as it's now called, the speed of the film. Some old cameras don't use uh, DX coding at all, so you're absolutely fine. But there's one or two more modern cameras that do need a DX coding. They might just result to 100 um, ASA by ISO by default, or you can actually buy stickers to go on the film canister. So first of all, you need a film canister. You need a bulk loader like that. This one hasn't got film in and how it works you load the film initially in the dark and you put it inside there. This would be in a changing bag or in the dark room. Make sure the film is coming out here. Make sure it's all secure. Make sure you have to be very sure that the gate is closed and that this is shut before bringing the bulk loader into the light. OK, so we've got the film in there and you need to make sure that it's the correct ray in which the emulsion is facing inwards. OK, so you load up your bulk film they come in either, I think, 50 metres length or 30 metres length. So we load up our film there. So here we have a film loader with a film in. When I open, first of all, I'm going to check the gate here. And we see it on the gate, open and close. It's closed. The gate must be closed. Really important that it's closed. But when I'm open, the 
So there I have my film there, okay? And it must be on the sprockets. And what I am going to do Hope you can still see it might so here's the film here have to be very careful that this spindle is pointing upwards and I'm going to take some masking tape now it's very important that it's masking tape you can use sellotape but it can be fiddly and it's not ideal masking tape is far better I find. So I'm going to stick it there then get my spool with the top topwards tape over like so. Now this has to have the flat pointing towards me really important that that is this ray because you must imagine when you put the film in the camera it's going to go from there to the input reel really important that it's in like that if you can see that so it's all a bit dark so I put this top on here so I just put the top on here make sure it's really secure there now this part here is really vital that the sprocket that the sprocket is on the film okay so I've got the sprocket on the film just yeah I've got movement there that is fantastic can you see that now I close this and then I want to open the gate by opening the gate I'm going to let the film be free so I open the gate and I the number of clicks is the number of frames so I'm going to have a 20 exposure film so I click one two and an extra four for the rind on and I lose a little bit at the end. I then have to close the gate, really important. If I don't close it, I will open and waste all my film, which is a real danger. So I've closed the gate, open, release, cut the film, put it aside making sure the gate's closed and just prepare the film in order to go in the camera. So there we have it. So there we have it. A 35mm film ready to go in a camera at greatly reduced cost. Sometimes you can pick these up on eBay with film in it. Of course you don't know how long the film's been in there for and you might not know the quality of the film. But you can reduce film costs and of course you've got the flexibility of, of how long the film is. So you might find that is a good way of economising on film. Hope that's been helpful. Bye for now.